All right. Hi, my name is Jeff Adams. I'm the owner and operator of Terra Sophia, an ecological design and watershed restoration firm uh, based in Moab, Utah. And uh, here to talk about a ongoing erosion, and gully, erosion control and gully repair project that I've been involved in on federal lands, uh, the Bureau of Land Management properties along Mill Creek in Moab. And it's a extremely popular um, record and hiking spot and as a result of the the human and animal traffic along with wind and water erosion there's a lot of sections of the creek um, banks that are pretty eroded out like this picture here of the old power dam of Mill Creek and uh, the nice waterfall and then a whole bunch of bare exposed soil that's causing pedestaling and uh, threatening to further degrade some of the, the native plants in the area. And um, I've been involved in this project for about three or four years now. It's been a, a great ongoing one. Um, and one of the main drivers of this is to protect and enhance water quality. And so sediment is one of the um, potential pollutants into the, the waterway, not only the sediment itself, but um, in our area, um, dissolved solids and other things attached to the uh, sediments can be a water quality impairment. And so this has been a really fun project, um, both because it's in a beautiful location, but we've also gotten to trial some new structure types, um, or at least new applications of different materials. And in this case, we're really calling these um, upland beaver dams. And it's a, a weaving of, we've used um, mostly invasive species, tamarisk and uh, tumbleweeds. We layer those to create some physical structure and then we pack in a mix of mineral earth and wood chips and it becomes a very stable structure, both in terms of water flows and erosion control, but also something that people, dogs can walk on without further degrading the system. And it's, uh, infinitely adaptable. So in this case, we've been able to go up some very steep slopes as well as work around the existing native plants that we want to keep. And so that's the before picture. And here it is upon completion where we've been able to yeah, weave in a lot of that material. So we've got multi-functions of clearing some invasive fire hazard tamarisk from one location, bringing it here and using it to stabilize the hill slopes. And um, this was right after it was done. And now that it's been uh, rained on several times, it's really matted down and, and solidified nicely while still being a permeable sponge. And it makes me realize I should have taken a new picture of it today because it's looking way better. <laughs> so Jeff, when you come to a project like this, you've got quite a, a, a toolbox of low tech erosion controls. How do you go about determining what to use and how to go about it? Because it looks like, and this is just the naked eye, it looks like you kind of created um, uh, dead vegetative materials into terraces. Is that what we're seeing? Uh, yes, exactly. And so, um, yeah, in this case, we are essentially using the brush to create terraces and, um, you know, weaving that all in and then embedding it with the mineral earth wood chip so that it holds on to moisture. And uh, eventually as stuff breaks down, becomes a good medium for growing plants. Um, so yeah, when I come to a project site, there's always, you know, a lot of questions, there's a lot of different potential tools to use, there's a lot of approaches, a lot of different scales, um, and so some of the thoughts that go through my mind are, how, how big is, is this area that I'm treating, um, what are the forces on it, is it a, a high power stream, is it sheet flow, is it um, got got people, is aesthetics a consideration, um, and also what's the steepness of the slope. So in this case, it was incredibly steep slopes that are up gradient from where people hang out down in the creek. So pretty much ruled out rocks and heavy things right away, just partly because of getting something heavy like our 
to stay on a very steep sandy hillside, but also because the risk of if something were to come loose, um, it could cause a potential issue down um, in the people recreating in the creek below. So in this case, in a lot of areas where it's really steep country, I'm more and more come to use what we collectively call brush mineral structures. And that's using really any kind of brushy or organic matter as the equivalent of like a rebar type of thing in conventional construction. And then the mix of mineral earth and wood chips acts as sort of your mortar or your fill. And those together be, create a really low cost organic solution that holds up well to foot traffic. Um, and that, that was important here to really acknowledge the sheer volume of people and dogs that are running up and down these hillsides and trying to gently support them to stay on the trail by creating um, a structure that actually looks a little bit uninviting of like not necessarily something you want to just go start climbing on what looks like could it just be a, a pile of sticks but they're all carefully laid and actually just gently stair stepped back into the hillside. So uh, I've been happy with how stable they come up, they become even under heavy foot traffic. So if I understand you correctly, you're using some of the material that's uprights as rebar, creating that as being a vertical structure and then taking longer material and then weaving it in between to create almost the wall of the terrace. And then you're backfilling with mineral earth and wood chips to fill in that terra structure. Is that right? Um, that's very close. So in this case, we didn't, I used rebar like figuratively. These are all horizontal and we kind of offset them so that they naturally kind of weave together the branch part of it. And then fill material goes, is both backfill, but also infill. So it's filling a lot of the spaces that naturally form between the pile of sticks essentially. And um, this technique in particular, I started to call it a, an upland beaver dam because it's essentially what a beaver would do in a creek system of weave a bunch of sticks together, make sure it's attached to the bank and the, um, the channel, the base of the channel and pack it with, with mud and other sticks and smaller organic debris to seal it up. And it looks like this is a place that can receive a pretty massive flash floods. So is this also a way to uh, stop some of the natural erosion that's happening with precipitation? Yes, absolutely. So um, first thing to point out is that this is not in the main channel and it's above the high water flow of Mill Creek itself, but upper right hand corner of the picture kind of near where those people are, are gathering, there is a gully that comes down and washes over this area. And, um, and so this type of technique is very good for sort of low to, to moderate sort of flow events. I wouldn't necessarily go and build this in the channel itself without probably some of those reinforcing posts and make it more of a beaver dam analog if it was in the main, channel. but this is, definitely an effective way to slow spread and infiltrate um, precipitation runoff. Do you find that now that these structures, these upland beaver dams are constructed you know, a couple of years out, are you finding that the natural uh, genetic seed bank in the area either be uh, deposited by wind or by birds or by other animals? Are, is, are they starting to find these areas and are you starting to see seedlings come out of these areas or are these areas already uh, are, are they pretty sterile in that? Um, you know, it's, it's some of both. So this is a highly degraded area. So the, the natural, the soil before we did this was pretty eroded and compacted. A lot of kind of exposed rock and desert pavement type of stuff happening. Um, we are starting to see some vegetation recruitment and just enhancement of some of the vegetation is there like in in this picture in the foreground is um, the native globe mallow and an alfalfa and we were able to just work the structures around them to provide a little extra protection to the existing plants there. Um, this particular project is still pretty new so we have not got a lot of reveg on it yet but there is um, other versions of this technique where we have found that 
um, they're getting some recruitment or that over time, if it's more of a, a home scale, like you could plant right into these once they've kind of had a little bit, maybe a season or so to start decomposing a little bit there, that is possible to just, just plant into there. And for the, the DIY or the rancher, the homesteader, the homeowner, how would these structures apply to something at that scale? Is this something people could do at home and learn for themselves? Or is this something that you'd have to reach out to professionals to figure out? Um, no, I think that this is definitely kind of a, a shovel ready solution. Um, one of the inspirations of this technique was a uh, fellow named Christian Miley down in, in New Mexico. And he was doing a, a forest thinning prop project on his property at just a couple acres. And he was thinning some of the, the pinion juniper to create fuel breaks and to have a more um, a less dense forest so more natural conditions and he was just chipping up that material and using just wood chips and making these wood chip berms on contour and um, he was having great success with that and so it can be as simple as a few little you know berms on contour up into um, more advanced things like I, I think the first pictures I showed of like when it's really steep that might not be the best place for the homeowner to start but with a little bit of practice and starting to understand how these materials fit together I, I feel that this is definitely a technique that's accessible to a lot of people amazing amazing it looks like you're taking a what looks like an arid environment and an environment that's gone brittle and is, is definitely quite erosive and you're just working with the materials that you have to catch and store as much water as possible, but also at the same time being very conscientious of the public users that are in that area and their effect as well, just helping to, uh, in some respects, stop the entropy of people in that area. So that way you're not getting more sediment into that channel and then eroding the sides even more so. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And we're trying to also make it just fit into the landscape. So after a couple seasons, I think, you know, hoping that people kind of forget that it's there. And it's just like, oh, there's these little, little bumps that happen to have a bit more green vegetation near them, and that it can just sort of become part of the natural scape, which is one of the I really like about the whole toolbox of, of low tech erosion controls is really just using natural materials and trying to make it fit in so that it just becomes part of the landscape. Yeah, there's something about this that's a very light touch where the implementation basically just disappears into the background after a couple of years to the point where, as you were saying, you don't even notice it's there as, a part, as, as opposed to some of the more conservation or park processes that are very much hardscape, are very um, apparent and degrade all the while doesn't doesn't really stop that degradation whereas this may have some regenerative ruin structure that leaves uh, more stability but um, less visibility let's call it for future generations yeah absolutely and I, i'd say one of the end goals of this is that it does get completely grown over with vegetation and then the plants become the long-term solution that's providing the erosion control and the habitat and the and the aesthetic functions within this area. So this is um, this is really just the start point to help set the ecosystem processes back in in action to go from a degrading sort of always more degrading site to one that can start to catch and hold sediment, nutrients, seeds, water, and and grow some vegetation back in. Yeah, absolutely. My last point here is that this also feels a little humble in that this isn't a big dam, this isn't concrete, this isn't major earth working machinery, but yet it has such a light touch, it has such a long duration. And truthfully, you know, if, if I was to see this photo, I, even, even my eye that's a bit more trained, I would be guessing, completely guessing what was going on here. And even that is a testament to the fact that these structures, these brush mineral structures, these wood chip structures are so effective and yet look so innocuous. 
yeah, that's that part of the goal is have it have it blend in. Use use locally sourced. You know, these materials were imported, but they are all locally sourced, meaning that they all came within five maybe miles of the project site. Incredible. Anything else you'd like to tell us about this particular project, Jeff? Um, I think that's it for, for this one. There's probably some other pictures of this, um, but yeah, I think that pretty well sums it up. Well, thanks so much, Jeff. It's such a pleasure to see your project and uh, if folks are interested. You can check out Terra Sophia, or if you're interested in interacting more with Jeff's information, you can check out regenerativeliving.com and low tech erosion control. Brand new course starting in 2022.